this is a disruptive conference, and, I, and so I thought I would inject some uh, perspectives uh, that, uh, in fact, haven't been presented before. Uh, and I'd like to focus on an application of nanoscale uh, technology for uh, fingerprinting uh, biomolecules. So uh, outline, uh, there's been a, um, many, many billions of dollars, uh, even narrowly defined, invested in nanotechnology by the uh, U.S. government and many uh, governments around the world over a period of, uh, say, 25 years or so. <clears throat> and, uh, and in fact, uh, what is driving this? Uh, uh, I'd like to uh, go back to a definition and uh, see if we're really, uh, 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 what has been the return on investment in terms of really disruptive uh, innovation. Uh, uh, in fact, there's various motivations. Systems would be a, a primary current commercial one. I, I'd like to look at, um, and, I, and I was a privilege to meet some of the young uh, entrepreneurs doing startups, uh, various ways of uh, detecting uh, biomolecules in solution. And uh, that could be a, a, a in vitro, uh, potentially in vivo. I'd like to go through uh, what, in fact, is a very successful way to do that. Uh, involving uh, molecular uh, probes and specificity, uh, pulling things out by a very uh, engineered uh, molecular interface. And then, uh, 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 in fact, I've been leading a DARPA project for the last several years on a very different way of doing it without that uh, tremendous uh, specificity. So uh, this nanoelectrochemical fingerprinting uh, 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 technology, and I would like to uh, conclude uh, by uh, looking at the uh, promise of, uh, of uh, perhaps this uh, revolution in information processing uh, as, a, as being connected to the uh, very front-end interface with the physical or biological world, and, and I think that there is a, some synergism. So I am the uh, current director of the NNIN, this 14 university uh, collection of nano Fabrication facilities has played a significant role in commercializing nanotechnology uh, in the U.S. and elsewhere. Uh, many of you uh, uh, in the UC system, uh, uh, the Santa Barbara would be a partner and uh, uh, would obviously had huge contributions in, in a number of areas of, uh, of uh, <clears throat> especially uh, uh, photonics uh, over the last uh, uh, couple of decades. So let's look at this. Um, uh, definition where it's really an odd thing to have a field defined by a length scale. Uh, but in fact, in that length scale, uh, there are phenomena that are qualitatively different, uh, emergent phenomena. You're, you're really, uh, the chemists would say, a macromolecular uh, level where there would be interesting binding and distributed wave functions. And uh, in fact, quantum mechanics would be rearing its head in this uh, dimensional scale, not that it isn't present in, uh, above and below. But I think the motivation, the excitement, ah, and this uh, was um, um, in the... Uh, uh, President uh, Clinton's speech was um, the novel, the novel properties and functions that would emerge in this dimension. Just not making things smaller, uh, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this um, uh, has only been partially exploited. This is 14 years ago uh, when this uh, definition from the White House came out. Um, in fact, uh, we're near Silicon Valley, and that has uh, ridden a very different kind of motivation for nanotechnology, where we would be just simply shrinking things and fighting any emergent phenomena because we had good devices in the micro scale and we were gonna shrink them to the nano scale and they had to stay good, which in fact meant more or less classical uh, in spite of themselves. There would be heroic efforts to maintain a, a good, clean uh, switch. And in fact, uh, Jim Mindel, recently retired from Georgia Tech, was at Stanford, was a pioneer. Uh, he was very excited about the potential. And clearly in 1981, it was a, a, a wide open uh, field still. There were many, many innovations. One, one core application, uh, one paradigm, 60 years. That may go down in human history as a very, very uh, anomalous uh, um, uh, free lunch almost. And it, uh, in fact, that engine goes on. We'd have the uh, Ivy Bridge uh, multi-core processor from Intel. And if you look inside, um, you would see a trigate FinFET, a, uh, 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 an outcome, uh, uh, a radically different kind of device that was invented in the late 90s at UC Berkeley by Chen Ming Hu and uh, Su J. King Liu uh, as the primary uh, 
uh, innovators. And uh, in fact, what was uh, incredible is you could scale this device and it would still be a classical device. It would still work, in other words, unlike a MOSFET, a traditional MOSFET made in that scale would, would be essentially useless. And, and so with 4.3, billion transistors on that uh, rather small slice of uh, silicon, uh, Intel has a, has, and continues to have a nice business, uh, that in fact is um, uh, kind of running out of gas. Um, uh, there are people going to three dimensions. Uh, many of my colleagues in electrical engineering and computer science at Stanford and the UC system would be struggling to continue innovation when the free lunch uh, is finally over. Um, in fact, you'll hear from a colleague of mine, Subhashish Mitra, today, who's had some really disruptive carbon nanotube uh, uh, devices. These are still classical. Now, there certainly is some excitement on something very different. And, and as NNIN director, I would be uh, visiting uh, uh, people around the country who are motivated by a radically different type of computing. Nitrogen vacancies set up defects that trap electrons in a way that we can we can have them there and manipulate their total spin. So this is a very much a quantum mechanical, uh, fundamentally quantum mechanical effect. And uh, generally, uh, that's great, but uh, you can do it individually. You can pick these out and at room temperature, which is in fact uh, incredibly disruptive, that this uh, doesn't require the liquid nitrogen doer or the liquid helium uh, kinds of temperatures. So in fact, um, uh, NV centers are leading candidates uh, for in implementing qubits uh, that could totally disrupt the uh, title of this uh, CTO form.